Remember SpongeBob SquarePants? It was this obscure little cartoon that aired on Nickelodeon in the late 90s. Notable for its surreal humour, likeable characters, and generating 11 digit profits on merchandising alone. This thing is a titan, and Nick has done its best to squeeze this little guy for all that he's worth. And that included making three feature films. One made out of heart, the other made out of humour, and the other made out of... respect? Sponge on the Run isn't terrible, but it doesn't hold a candle to the first two. Fans are still arguing over which of those is the better movie. Might as well throw my hat into the ring on this one, so welcome to the showdown! Today I'll review the Spongebob Squarepants movie, released in 2004, the one about Plankton stealing King Neptune's crown and Spongebob and Patrick going on a buddy road trip to Shell City to retrieve it, and the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water from 2015, where Spongebob and Plankton are at first on the run, give me that title, then they and the others come out of the water. Both, in my opinion, are 4 out of 5 comedy movies. The plots are loosey-goosey, but the comedy stays sharp, and the spirit they're going for never dims. They also both come at major turning points for the franchise, with the first movie seeing a mass exodus of original crew members from the first three seasons, including the late creator Steven Hillenburg and original creative director Derek Dryman. The second movie was released during the ninth season of the show, and saw the return of a couple early crew members, including Hillenburg and Dryman, and saw a revitalization of the program for that and many other reasons. Both have done more good than harm to the franchise at the very least, but which of them do I like more? The first movie, to me, is a special part of my love for Spongebob. I still have the DVD our family got in 2006, one of our first alongside Harry Potter and the Inflation Spell. To say I have nostalgia for this movie is an understatement. So no matter the criticisms I give of it in this showdown, it won't dent the soft spot I have for it. Quick plot summary ahoy, Spongebob is excited about the opening of the Krusty Krab 2, a second Krusty Krab Mr. Krabs built right next to the first one for money. Spongebob's sure he'll get to be its manager, but is devastated when Krabs gives the keys to Squidward. Meanwhile, Plankton's gone edgy from all his failures to steal the Krabby Patty's secret formula, all 25 of them, and resorts to his 26th and most evil plan of all, Plan Z. Steal the crown of King Neptune the 15th, sell it to the dreaded Shell City, frame Mr. Krabs, and hire a bloodthirsty hitman to take care of Spongebob and Patrick, who have taken it upon themselves to retrieve the crown from Shell City and prove that they're men. Quite the Spongebob movie, and quite the end to the series, as Steven Hillenburg wanted it to be the grand finale, or at least the last canon adventure. And looking at it from that perspective, this silly cartoon about a silly, carefree Spongeboy bowing out with a coming-of-age action-adventure is pretty funny. I'm young enough to have always seen it from the perspective of, I love this movie, it makes me want to watch more funny Spongebob stories on TV. Rather than its intended goal to take this cute show and push it to a higher level of action and peril. What impresses me is how naturally they made this direction seem. The show had always dabbled in horror and suspense once in a while, but now it was time for it to go all out. A gritty, testosterone-filled bar in a sunken ship, a valley of bones and a monster-infested trench, and the first time since the third episode that you really feel like Spongebob and Patrick could die. I like this story a lot. Sure, it's pretty bizarre at points, never staying the same kind of movie for too long. But there's a lot of variety here. The very end where Spongebob becomes the ultimate goofy goober is a big source of contention. Either you can get behind how weird it is, or don't understand how the story led up to it. I mean, it's comedy. Not everything deserves a hard explanation. But I can kind of see this as Spongebob unleashing his inner child to eradicate all the gritty vibes that had piled onto the movie. That isn't to say the plot isn't without some disappointments. I'm not the first to argue this, but for a story originally meant to send off the Spongebob universe, 
it only really sends off SpongeBob, Patrick, Plankton, and maybe Mr. Krabs. Squidward, Sandy, Mrs. Puff, and Gary are all shorthanded and not given enough to do. Some of them I expected to get warped by Planktopolis, others I was expecting more of a fight out of. This criticism has been dimmed with hindsight, however. We've gotten more than enough out of these characters since SpongeBob was renewed for more seasons. Even counting the main characters relevant to the story, how they were characterized is also divisive. Starting here, they really laid it on thick that SpongeBob and Patrick were childish and naive to how the world works. Sure, they had to learn something for the story to have any weight, but it's another thing you start to notice against the later seasons, where their maturity varies considerably depending on the writer. I've seen some complaints over Plankton being way too evil in this movie, and I get it kind of makes some of his character development on the show seem like it was for naught, but come on, this is the end of the timeline. I can buy him being jaded and cold, like his marriage to Karen. Plus, although they never interact on screen, his hitman Dennis is an amazing extension of this attitude, seeming calm at first but slowly turning into a monster. If there's anyone to complain about, it's the new King Neptune. I still don't get why they didn't just use the Neptune from the show. Dono Hurley is already a big name, so no need to get Jeffrey Tambor and completely redesign the character and his lore. We did get Princess Mindy out of this, played by Scarlett Johansson, so there's a bit of silver lining, but the movie Neptune leaves me disappointed, especially since they didn't use him in the show. Funny story about that, because Spongebob's a Nickelodeon production, and the movies are Paramount productions, there was a firewall preventing them from using movie assets, like the movie characters and most Goofy Goober iconography, that was only lifted in 2014. To be fair, they did help give the movie its own distinct visual identity, and a good thing too. Being one of the last 2D animated releases to command serious attention, it delivered some really fluid animation and gorgeous design work, a lot of which is downright iconic now. And for as jumpy as the story is, it's undeniable they had a lot of fun with every nook and cranny of it. From Goofy Goobers, to the Thug Tug, to Shell City, to Planktopolis. I should also point out the live-action material that takes up a good portion of the film. The framing device of live-action pirates, still existing in 2004, going to see the movie is pretty funny. It harkens back to the title sequence in Patchy Segments 2, but puts its own spin on it. As a whole, there aren't too many references to older episodes, you have to look long and hard for the few they throw in. Not to mention, the soundtrack is a delight. Music wasn't their top priority, but they went all in with songs like Now That We're Men and Just A Kid. Ocean Man by Ween closing it out is both the icing on the cake and the tip of the iceberg. The movie's biggest draw is the comedy, no surprise there. But they went all in, every scene has an iconic bit. With any comedy movie, it's important to keep people laughing, or at least amused, with as much of the movie as you can. And Spongebob had covered so many stories and situations that it knew how to make anything they wanted funny. To be clear, not all of them are winners, but the scenes are so dense that even if there is a lame joke or two, it's not going to drag everything down. As with anything Spongebob, a lot of the jokes are iconic, sure, but I imagine if you're getting bored with the big ones, you can always scour it to find something amazing that you forgot about last time. Not me though, I can't forget anything about this movie. It's no cinematic masterpiece, but as a cartoon movie for kids and Spongebob fans, it's a dang good time for anyone. As a kid, I wanted every animated movie I watched to have a sequel, because I liked watching the characters so much. That was never an issue for Spongebob. Though I was more of a Disney Channel kid, I'd pop back to Nickelodeon sometimes to see what the little guy was up to, and catch an old favourite or two. This happened less as I got older and into different things, so I didn't get the news that they were making a second Spongebob movie until 2013. I was a bit frustrated that it reportedly wasn't a direct sequel to the first, but it didn't really interest me, much less bother me. 
I'd heard that the movie was going for this weird live-action CGI angle with superhero versions of the characters. I heard was just weird enough to work. I saw trailers for the show soon after that were funnier than in years. So I rented Sponge Out of Water from Video Easy in late 2015 and was pleasantly surprised. The story is not very conventional for long-form Spongebob. It starts with Burger Beard the Pirate, played by Antonio Banderas, heading to the Bikini Bottom Island to attain a valuable treasure, Spongebob fanfiction. A story about the characters begins, a routine one about Plankton trying to capture the formula, with a wartime theme for some reason, but as the story unfolds, something strange happens. At a point where Spongebob and Plankton are fighting over the formula bottle, it vanishes mysteriously. Wait a minute. Molecular deconstruction? I proved that to be a scientific impossibility seven times. Wait a minute. I think I forgot to empty Gary's litter box today. And not only that, but all the Krabby Patties have gone too. And without them, Bikini Bottom goes into chaos. Welcome to the apocalypse, Mr. Squidward. I hope you like leather. I prefer swipe. SpongeBob's the only one who knows for a fact that Plankton's innocent, so they team up and try to get it back. Seems like this is what the movie will be about, right? SpongeBob and Plankton navigating an edgy, apocalyptic rendition of the beloved town, learning something about TM work along the way. Sounds like an awesome movie, but then it turns into a movie about them traveling back in time to take the formula before it disappeared, with a ton of wacky time travel shenanigans in between. But then, after that fails, it turns into a movie where Spongebob and the gang must track the scent of Krabby Patties to the surface world, and they're turned into computer-animated versions of themselves who have to face humans and land shenanigans. And just when you think that's what the movie's gonna be about, it becomes The Avengers. The story is by far the most divisive aspect of this movie. Either you really like it, or you really don't. The one constant element is Spongebob's connection to the Krabby Patty secret formula, which by this point is a legend more than it can ever be a physical recipe, and a character arc for Plankton as he learns the value of teamwork, which he learns but doesn't exactly take on board for future appearances. The main villain of the piece, Burger Beard, appears sporadically in the first half of the movie, then he makes it to land with the Patty formula and becomes the primary antagonist, slowly and naturally for sure. I can see how the story's being held together, but can completely understand criticism that it's confusing and disjointed. Thinking of this as a kid's movie, they'll like a lot of these fun distractions and would care more about seeing the story complete than you'd think. And thinking of it as a Spongebob movie, like I said, the first movie knew how to cycle through set pieces well, and Sponge Out of Water tried to be a step up, make each set piece feel like its own grand adventure. Plus, I think the fans of the movie tend to respect how it impacted the Spongebob series. Remember, the show is running out of ideas fast at this point in time, and with the movie providing a new avenue for wacky ideas to this world, it certainly did something to reinvigorate the production team and make them better manage their work. It led to a renaissance for the show, which you don't often see in long-running animated series. And even though this movie has its rough points, I can't thank it enough for saving Spongebob. That doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with this movie. Well, I guess this is where that horrible smell was coming from. Burger Beard's followed around by a pack of wisecracking seagulls who are there for a couple lowbrow jokes and take part in this weird epic rap battle against a space dolphin at the end. Hold up, fish guts! You can't insult us! The seagull crew are wearing no mood to hear from you! And I don't know why this is here. I mean, rap battles were hip and relevant back then, but this is better off as a special feature on the DVD than an actual part of the film. The movie has a lot of these weird, disconnected sequences that are pushing because they're funny. And to be fair, most of them are great. The sugary fantasy land in SpongeBob's head and our introduction to Bubbles the Overseer of Two Planets are some of the movie's best moments, and I must admit, I laughed really hard when I heard what music they would use for time travel. It's the soundtrack highlight, believe it or not. Ironically, it makes the land adventure portion feel less special, despite it being the big selling point. Now it has some good moments, like a random talking baby, and it keeps the story going in entertaining and exciting ways. Not to mention beautiful. 
This wasn't the first time SpongeBob characters were rendered in 3D, but it's sure one of the most striking and faithful to their 2D selves. Sure, they only spend around half of their screen time in their normal designs, and the other half in these super macho superhero forms, but these have fun too. It's not the first time we've seen them go on land, be supers, or Mr. Krabs as a robot, but I'm not going to complain too much, as it's all well done. I guess I got my wish, a Spongebob movie where they have more to do. But I think because this stuff is so publicised, we don't see as much praise for the 2D animated portion of this movie, which is great. Compared to the first, it's a little more on model, but it's still one of the most expressive 2D theatrical movies of the century. And it goes to all of these places, wartime, apocalypse, high fantasy, science fiction, mixed media, stylized angular art, and need we forget rock hard abs? Sure, Sponge on the Run is the more obvious eye feast, but Sponge Out of Water isn't too bad either. But is it better than the first? Now that's a hard question. They both have clear flaws, but I still appreciate both of them for their roles in the history of the show. The first movie for capping off a wonderful run of episodes, and the second for kickstarting another. In the offense of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, it can get too dark to really feel like a SpongeBob misadventure, some of the characters aren't utilized to their full potential, and it did get very weird treating it like a standalone product for so long, though that couldn't be helped. While Sponge Out of Water's comedy isn't quite as timeless, and the plot keeps changing its mind on what it wants to be, to the point that it can function more like three or four episodes stitched together. In the defense of these movies, they're funny, shut up. I guess it's all down to a matter of preference, this one. And my preference lies in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. I can't help it, I like the more consistent story, and these jokes and this character arc are a part of me. I like Sponge Out of Water all the same, and acknowledge there are aspects where it outshines its pre tippet predecessor, but the first movie is more of an event, and more of a fulfilling journey about a couple of goofy goobers becoming men. I mean, it's still the third worst of these movies if you look at it that way. That's a good place to leave it. Goodbye for now. You're still here? It's over. Go home.